Hello and welcome to tutorial 192. A Gold Plus member asked me if I had ever done, created an anchored VWAP indicator. So that is volume weighted average price, but an anchored one. So what I've got applied to the chart at the moment is the standard trade station VWAP estimated indicator. And you can see that what that's doing in fact, there's a few settings, but what I've got it doing here is starting the volume weighted average price from the beginning of the day and drawing the lines. And what he wanted was an anchored VWAP. So what the anchored VWAP means that we would click on a bar and the VWAP would start being drawn from that specific bar. If, for example, you had a, a low bar or an extreme bar. And so that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. And I'll just uh, talk you through the code. So the first thing to note is that we're using the charting host because we have to detect when a bar is clicked. As always, the best way of doing this is to go to toolbox and to double click on the charting host. And then having created a charting host, we would go into the properties and double click on chart element click to create an event. And then when that's all been done, the code can be found in designer generated code and we can copy that into our program. I've already done that, so we don't need to, to do that again. So I'm just going to delete charting host from the program, but the code for the charting host set up the host is here and I put that in a once statement. You can see also there's the, uh, the chart element click that sets up this event when an element is clicked on the chart. That event can be found here. So we're going to be looking for a bar specifically. So we've I've, I've created a variable bar visual element, which is it's uh, the uh, the type of element and I've called it underscore bar. So the way this works, we're saying if the thing being clicked, we're getting the information from here, args.type equals chart visual element type dot bar. If you, uh, in fact, if we just put a space in there, if you were to put a period, you'll see all the different elements, bar, plot, etc. We're going to be using a bar. So we say the bar equals args.element as type bar visual element. And the first thing we need to do in case something has been clicked before. So in the example that I just gave you, I clicked on one bar and then I clicked on another and you'll notice that the plot has disappeared. So what we do is we clear the old plot. And we do that just using the plot statement, going through a loop, but setting the color as transparent. Then we also, we do that using the information um, underscore bar dot bars ago plus one to clicked bar. So click bar is you'll see here where we store the bar dot bars ago. So that would mean that here we'd be going from the current bars ago plus one to click bar, which was the last time that was stored to clear the data. Got a little bit of information printed. Uh, if you're interested in any of the syntax, that's not strictly necessary for the program. And then we calculate the VWAP, the estimated VWAP. So we reset some price vol and we reset some vol. And in some price vol, we sum going from the clicked bar down to zero. So going from the, the oldest bar in our range down to zero, we sum the price counter times ticks counter. Now, with uh, volume, you'll know that in TradeStation, there's several words that can be used for volume. And we can find out about those by right clicking and saying a description of ticks, which will give us the, uh, the information and then clicking here. And you'll see all the different ways in which volume is represented in TradeStation, depending on the, the symbol, stock or futures or foreign exchange course why that there isn't a volume. So we go through the bars, we sum those values, and then we store some price vol divided by some vol into anchor VWAP. And then we plot 
the value of anchor VWAP for that specific bar. So just going back to the chart, if I click on a specific bar, let's get a little bit closer to the, uh, the end of the chart. So if I click a specific bar, say this one, then it will clear the previous plot and then it will work forward from this bar to the zero bar, which is the current bar. Then having gone through that, and we just do this when a bar is clicked, for the last, for the, for the, the most recent bar, what we need to do is store the price and the volume value in underscore price and underscore ticks. And then we set last bar to be equal to current bar. And we'll see why we do that in an instant. Now there's going to be two sorts of charts that we could apply this to, or of course, many sorts of charts, but there's going to be charts that are currently, where the, uh, the symbol is currently open. So we, uh, the, the current bar is receiving data or bars where the market is not open. So let's look at the next stage of our program. And that is when we update the VWAP program. So the E-mini is open, the market is open for trading. So in fact, this bar, the bar that we've just done our last calculation on going through the loop is still open. So if we just leave things as they are, we're going to start getting incorrect values. So what we need to do is we say if last bar equals current bar, in other words, we're still working on that bar and we've not done this update yet, then we need to subtract from some price vol the, the value of underscore price multiplied by underscore ticks and subtract from some vol the underscore ticks just to get that back to what it should be to calculate this latest bar. Then also the, uh, the sum price vol and sum vol are intrabar persist variables. Now, because we're doing this calculation uh, as each tick goes along, and we don't want that value to be stored permanently until the end of the bar. What I've also done is created some new variables, RT sum price vol and RT sum vol, and they, uh, into those, we've stored sum price vol and sum vol. So you can see here's all the, uh, the variables and the inputs. Incidentally, the price we're using here, I put in average price, which is gonna be uh, open, plus high plus low plus close divided by four or high plus low plus close divided by three if open is not applicable. So then having having done that, we can then work on the RT sum price vol. We simply add the price, current price times ticks for the for the, um, the, the bar that's open and to the RT sum vol, the number of ticks. And then we do the calculation again, making sure that sum vol is not zero. We do uh, calculate the anchor VWAP and we plot that for the current bar. Then at the end of the bar, on the last tick of the bar, bar status one is equal to two, we store the value of RT sum price vol and RT sum vol back into our intrabar persist variables, sum price vol and sum vol. And then finally we set update to be true. That means that we have been through this real time update at least once. And that means that we don't keep subtracting the value of price and ticks at the end of the update event more than once. Now I'm just going to refresh the chart and just to show you something because in the uh, in fact, yeah, let's just go to the chart refresh the chart. So we've, uh, if we go to the studies and edit studies, uh, in the general, what I've got is the maximum bars study will reference set to auto detect. Now you can have it either, but let me just explain what the difference is here. So I've got it on auto detect. I'm just going to make sure that we can see our print log. It's going to clear that and refresh again. So I've got a print statement showing us uh, the bar numbers through as the program runs. Now, if I click on a bar and sometimes it is a little difficult to, uh, to click on an actual bar, but you'll notice that there is no line drawn. And that is because what the program did, it re, re it, because it wasn't sure how many max bars back it needs, it recalculates and refresh the chart. So if I now click on a, a bar earlier than the one I just clicked or the bar I clicked, you'll see now that the line is drawn. So if we go for an older one, you'll see that 
nothing is drawn because it's recalculating the max bars back. If I click again, you'll see that it does that. So probably the uh, if you're prepared to live with that, the, the setting where the program calculates the number of bars back is a good one. However, what you could do is say, okay, I'm going to set user defined to, let's just say a hundred. And now if I click a bar, let's just say this bar here. Now you'll see I've gone beyond the hundred. We tried to reference more bars. However, any earlier bar, we just need to turn that back on because it turned off because of that uh, problem. But now if I click an earlier bar in the first hundred or in the last hundred, I should say, you get the line immediately because the program does not need to automatically calculate how many, what the max bars back value should be. Okay, well, I hope uh, this program is useful to you. If uh, if you're a Gold Pass member, you can download it for free. Otherwise, I'll make it available. Please uh, join the Markplex email list and also subscribe to wherever you're watching this video and let me know if you spot any bugs or errors and uh, also feel free to send me your questions and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you very much.